Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work session for August 18th, 2021. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the agenda as presented? A motion to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion to accept? Second. Second. Sorry, second. Mm -hmm. I have a motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Our first item of business will be Dr. Sands and Linda Friday. Welcome, Linda. How you doing? Yeah. Good. Is it okay if I take my mask off? Oh, it's, it's social distancing. As long as you're okay. three to six feet apart from somebody, you're fine. Perfect. Uh, first of all, um, Dr. S uh, Salins and our board and our commission uh, would like to uh, thank you for allowing me to speak before you tonight. Uh, my name is Linda Friday. I'm the president of the Queen's County Chamber. I've actually been in the position a little over 20 years. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, I know everybody on the school board, so I'm um, glad to see all of you in person. Uh, I, we do watch your meetings, uh, every meeting. We have not missed one uh, since you, you filmed them, which is really awesome. Um, tonight, I'm here just to um, welcome Dr. Dr. Salins for uh, being our new superintendent. We're happy to have you. Um, we typically like to present our new superintendent with a small token welcome gift um, on behalf of the business community. So I have a gift that I'd like to present to you um, tonight. And then um, I have a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about on some of the things that we are doing in the community. So if you don't mind, if, oh. I, if I can just, um, I, I can wow. either sit it here or, um, I'll just give this to you. Thank you so very much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. We, um, we have been a great partner of the schools here in Queen Anne's County, and I know um, Ms. Harper and Mr. Smith have met with the, with the chamber on many occasions, and um, Commissioner uh, Bennett, you've also, she's a member of the chamber, so we just wanna thank you for all that you do for the business community. Uh, we're strong uh, through COVID. We've had some struggles, uh, but we've been able to work through um, a lot of those struggles. Uh, the county was very generous and gave our economic development department 2.5 million dollars and we were able to get those dollars out to the business community so that was really a, a great thing uh, we've been helping the restaurant uh, restaurant um, organizations uh, in our in our community also nonprofits so those are some things that we've done uh, behind the scenes that you wouldn't know but it's it's been really an awesome opportunity for the chamber to really support those businesses in our community um, that support us and support our school system um, so on behalf of the business community we would like to welcome you and also look forward to our partnership and hopefully one day uh, soon schools gets back when school get back gets back we'll be able to um, maybe have lunch or something just to talk bit about how we can move forward with our partnership yes, we would I'm really like to make that happen yeah Thank you so much. yeah um, also we um, we actually uh, gave each one of your new teachers a goodie bag from the business community uh, so all, all of your teachers your new teachers and I I don't know I think there were at least 60 uh, received a bag from the business community. So Dr. Salas, this is for you too. So I'll just sit this here. Um, but that's a gift. Sure. Uh, everybody's welcome in here, but we got a social distancing if you're not gonna wear a mask. There's chairs that are done that way. So please sit in the chairs. If they fill up, keep three to six feet apart unless you're willing to wear a mask. Thank you. Um, so anyway, we have a, a, I wanted to give you um, the bag that we gave your new teachers, and I think we did like 60 of them. So we were very happy to be able to um, provide that service to to your new teachers. Uh, typically, we do a new teacher celebration in, in September, but unfortunately due to COVID, we probably will not be doing that again this year. Um, but I do know that we are working on something for your new teacher, uh, your teacher of the year. So that's something that will be coming down. Um, also, the last 
thing I'd like to talk about, and I actually have a bag for each one of uh, the school board members and also for you. Um, the QAC goes purple. Um, some of you have seen this. Um, so we are going to be going purple for the month of September. We would encourage your sc the school system to be a part of this program. The business community and the residents of our community are all going to be going purple. We are doing an event on September the 1st. Um, that's going to be in the courtyard actually this year, uh, right here in Centerville. So we're very excited about that. Uh, so we're going to be uh, lighting up the whole town of Centerville. Uh, so I'll be before the commission tomorrow night, the town council tomorrow night, just to talk to them about how that's all going to work. So I would encourage all of you to come out and um, see what we have going. We do have a shirt for you in one of these bags. I think it's this one. Great. Uh, for, so that, that you're all, you know, already for uh, QAC goes purple. Uh, there's light bulbs for each one of you to, um, to light up your storefront or your, your house. So um, I would encourage you to do that. Also, we have some other events that are going to be happening for the month of September. Uh, the county is going to be uh, dedicating 100 feet of uh, Cross Island Trail to um, aware um Aware, it's going to be, it's called an awareness trail, and that's going to be uh, in purple flowers and things like that. So we're really excited. We would love for all of you to come out just for the celebration of when we do a ribbon cutting for that. So um, that's really all that I have today. I just want to thank you and look forward to working with you um, over the next um, few years, and hopefully longer. Um, I don't know if I'll be here, but a few years, and we um, look like I said, look forward to to our partnership. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you to the school board members for all that you've done because I know you know you all have done a lot too so thank you so I don't know if you have any questions for me but um, anyway okay. here's for supporting our Thanks, new teachers Linda, for yeah. sure I, yeah. I remember seeing all the bags yeah so we really appreciate yeah. all that support well we love doing it we love supporting our teachers absolutely yeah. we'll be supporting yeah. Um, yeah. yeah that's our future so we want to make sure that we <laughs> we have that good partnership so. thank, thank you Linda thank and you. personally we know very well how much the business community works with the school system and all the things they donate and work with us and give opportunities for our students. And it's a nice feeling to know that it's a partnership yeah. and I think it can only get stronger. But like yeah. I said, this has been going on for like you and I have been for 20 years or yeah. over, but yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a great thing, but yeah. thank you. Well, I call us the dot connector and that's really, it's really what we are. We are a dot connector to our community. So anyway, I'm gonna just leave these, I'll, I'll leave these here and then okay. I don't know if you wanna move them someplace right. I else. I think Ms. Pauls is gonna yeah. get up and Okay, grab thank you so much and have a great night. Thank you, Thank you, Linda. You too. Is this your bag, Linda? <laughs> Okay, our next uh, informational item will be central office RFP. I guess that's Sid. Yes, okay. so we're gonna Carla's going to come up. Carla's going to start it off. Yeah. I'll get us started if you don't mind. Absolutely. And one thing for the audience, I know there's little children in here, so it's the same family, you know. I saw one lady leave with a stroller. It's no problem that it's the same family if you're together. It's just social distancing as we have to be you know, mandated at the present time. Good evening, members of the board, President Smith, Dr. Salins, and executive team. For the record, my name is Carla Pullen. I'm the facilities planner for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I'm here with you this evening to discuss the possibility of moving forward with the design for a new central office building or the renovation to the existing building. I want to outline a timeline for you and what we expect that design process to look like and then give you an opportunity to ask questions that you may have about that process. So just as a little bit of background, the first direction that we need is a decision from the Board of Ed as to whether we are looking at new building construction or whether we're going to look at a renovation. Whether we're looking at either scenario, the first thing that we're going to plan is to utilize an RFQ process. This is request for qualifications. And what that does is determines the best qualified firms first before we start to assess their price for how much it will cost. This is a typical selection process that we use. This is the same process we used most recently at Graysonville Elementary School for the addition there. And we had 27 firms submit in that process, which were then narrowed down. 
every firm that is qualified is able to apply. What we look for is their past experience in like projects. We look at how they're putting their project team together, the financial standing of the company, their approach to the project, and how they're gonna get it done in the prescribed timeframe that we give them. With the initial responses, we're gonna use a rubric to rate each of them. So we'll have a team or a committee that is gonna look at these RFQ submissions and we're gonna narrow it down, probably the, to the top three to five firms. And we say three to five because in past experience, we typically end up with some of the top firms that have similar scores. So we wanna make sure that the process is fair and that we're getting everyone that has scored highly on that rubric in here to meet with us. That narrowing committee we would anticipate to be internal Queen Anne's County Public School staff first so looking at Mr. Pinder chief operating officer the maintenance foreman and probably myself as facility planner to do that that first narrowing the timeline that we anticipate for the central office building would be as follows our office supporting services needs about another week to complete that RFQ document. We would request another week for our procurement department and our legal team to be able to review that to make sure that we are compliant in every way that we need to be. We will then put out that RFQ for two weeks to the vendors. So give the vendors two weeks to get their submissions together and back to us. We will review those submissions, as I mentioned. We will narrow them down. We expect if we have 27 responses, it's probably gonna take us two weeks. If there are less, I would anticipate that it'll take a little bit less time as well. We will then shortlist into those three to five firms, and we're gonna ask them to interview. And when we put that interview team together, we would hope that it would be a member of the Board of Education, a member of the county commissioners or the county administrator, Dr. Salins, some of our internal members here, chief operating officer, our CFO, so that we can take a very well-rounded look at the interviewees. Once we have scored in those interviews on another predefined rubric, that's when we'll ask for their cost proposal. So we will be able to look at how well they scored in their interview, plus how much they are going to charge us to do the work. From that point, we're able to award a project. So we believe that we're probably one to two months away from actually doing that award. From there, it will go pretty quickly. So we would go into the schematic design process and community outreach. We wanna make sure that we're talking to our community to see what they wanna see in the town of Centerville, as well as doing some outreach to the town as well, since if this is a new building or a renovation, it will be within town limits. Design development gets us a little bit further into the design process, about a two month period with construction documents taking about four months. The bidding process, once those documents are done, it will take us about a month to put this out to contractors and then get their responses back and make an award. Overall, we're looking at about six to nine months for the design, a month to be able to award it to a contractor, which puts us right in the area of next June, the end of June, which would be perfect timing because that is when the funding for the construction will become available on July 1st. What I've put here, and I apologize because we wanted to get all of the information. This is also available in the uh, feasibility study that was presented back in October to this body. This is the cost comparison for renovating this building, renovating this building and bringing our Rise Academy inside and building a new building. What that document shows is that the overall lowest cost was for new construction on the Vincent property in front of the existing county building. So that is right across the street from the Acme, Caddy Corner from the high school. When you look at the total for the actual building, 
those numbers come in very, very similarly. What you have to take into account is that if this building is renovated, we have 80 staff members that have to be relocated for about a year's time. And that's where the real cost creeps in. So to make changes to this building, to build a new building, very similar, but we have a lot of additional costs in the renovation that are not necessarily directly related to the building itself. With that, Mr. Pender, is there anything you'd like to add? We would like to entertain any questions that you may have or? Sure. I, nothing I'd like to add. I'm, we just kind of wanted to give you a timeline of, you know, what we were looking at and the direction that, you know, we wanted to, to head um, into and then kind of the budget summary of what was presented between the three different options. I have a, a couple questions on the, on the rubric. When you are putting it out for bid, are we going to allow Queen Anne's County uh, contractors, do they get the extra points? If there's a contractor from Queen Anne's County, I know that we came out with that a couple years ago, that they would get the, a leg up. Yes. The county came out with that about four years ago, I believe. So we, we, they will be allowed, they'll get that. And these will, any bids, whether we get the renovation or the new construction, is going to be a firm fixed price, is that correct? That's what we anticipate. We anticipate that this would be through a general contract. Now when you say firm fixed price, that would be up front. When we start to talk about any potentials for change orders, that typically is an additional cost. But that would only be initiated by us, right? Potentially, okay. sometimes unforeseen circumstances. Okay. It, it's it's less typical with a new building that those would pop up, but if we're renovating this building, I guarantee you they're going to get into the insides of the structure and they'll find some things that they didn't anticipate. Do we think that we could build into the RFQ if we're talking about uh, renovating and, and displacing the 80 uh, staff persons? Could we put it in there that, because surely they're not going to be working on every part of the building all the time. So even though it'd be a pain, could we shift? people into a smaller section while one part's being renovated as opposed to the other? So you could look at a phased uh, renovation, occupied renovation, but you know that's going to include bringing in portables and modulars for you know office uh, space moving into. And that's, as Ms. Poland said, that's where your costs are going to kind of go up with that part, but it, that is an option. Okay. We had a presentation before you and Mark were part that kind of went over that. Is that presentation still available for them to review? Well, that'd be good. Because it was talking about the zones and doing it in phases. I would imagine. I have to yes, I believe that's probably within the feasibility study and yes, we'll make sure that you have the link to that again. That was presented back in October and we'll make sure that we, we link that to you. Okay. Yep. And I and I guess I just wanted to, I, I think that when we got um, there was a letter that was read a couple weeks ago and, and I and I just didn't want anybody getting any misconceptions about it that I believe in, correct me if I'm wrong, if we vacate this building um, to get a new building um, in the Vincent Street mm -hmm. where um, planning and zoning is, the building resorts back to the county. Yes. Is that correct? So the county commissioners would be the ones to choose or whether or not they tear that, it down or repurpose it or whatever. Is that correct? That is correct. Any of our school buildings, when you know they've gone through their longevity, they become surplus and are um, given back to the county, county? commissioners. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then they were saying that it's close to the water and sewer capacity, but the commissioners are the water and sewer commissioners. Is that correct? No. We're, uh, well, who determines who gets water and sewer capacity? We are in a municipality of Centerville, not Queen Anne's County. We are in Queen Anne's County, but the, uh, we'd have to still go through uh, approval from county, but town zoning mm -hmm. and water and sewer is established by uh, Queen Anne's County. Now, Queen Anne's County Commissioner? No, the we, town. Town, Centerville Town okay. Council, I'm sorry. Okay. So that is a town issue. Uh, okay. Thanks, Dick. So I have two questions, if you don't mind. Sure. The cost per square foot, I couldn't remember. The new building is going to be larger than this building. That's why it's more money per square foot. No, it's actually a little bit smaller. We're at about 57,000 square feet here. We're only looking at potentially 42,000 square feet, and we may have some ideas to make that even smaller. Essentially, it's... It's probably mostly related to sustainability. And okay. so the materials that we will be cost using will cost more money okay. to make it a sustainable building that will last us 
for a very long time. And going back to what happened with Stevensville Middle School, I was on that building committee. Uh, yes, finding things that nobody knew didn't even exist on the maps. I mean, we found a whole shaft in the middle of Stevensville Middle School that no one, I mean, had no idea was there. So it's also kind of surprises could happen with this building. That could be exciting. My big question is, why is this a Board of Education vote and not a County Commissioner vote? We are not the funding source. I don't believe we're asking for a vote this evening. Well, that's I the first thing you said. Would. Well, that's I, I the think, first thing think, you said. I think they're asking for direction. Mm -hmm. Just direction. From some direction. This is not an action item. This is a direction. No, no, no. I, I, I'm really asking the question. Well, is why is why is it a board of education vote? Because if we go to a new building, it, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, we're affected by this. I think the commissioners, and this was a split with the commissioners, have said that they would propose a new building rather than a renovation. That's what they want to do. Now, if we have complete heartburn and say we want to stay here, then we can sit there and recommend that. But um, they are the funding source. Yes. And we gave them three options, I think, at one time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I think even this year in our... It's right here, sir. I know, but I'm, going, I'm, I'm, going over, I'm just going to pull a piece of paper up from our capital budget. It was revised on 3 10 21. Uh, we had a three million plan and design, just central office five hundred thousand for just patching, two point five million for uh, HVAC to stay in this building for a temporary, and then we have the two other things. Uh, they choose when they did our capital budget to go with the three million planning and design for the central office building and that included pretty much a new building. Um, I think we've heard from the public. I got some things I'd like to say about that, but you know, that's I think we need to give our staff direction because. In all fairness to Dr. Salen, she's being asked by the county commissioners how to move forward, and this board should make that decision. Had, had that decision in that to me. In other words, once we make the decision whether to vacate or not vacate this building, this building becomes the purview of the, the commissioners, right. what they're going to do with it, right? So that's, that's what we did call. with Southersville Middle School. When we built the new building, we handed the old Southersville Middle School over to Steve Aarons right in this room. It was mm -hmm. not fun. Uh, he didn't want to take possession of it, but they had to because it was revert. It does revert back to the county. Yeah, and we haven't torn a, a built Crumpton still up in Crumpton, the little yes. building up there. Um, we don't have a history of tearing down buildings, but we got to be realistic. If there's not multi, none of the purpose for this building, it will deteriorate to the point that there's going to be a problem. And I think as stewards, and we've been here over 120 years, uh, 70 years as a school, and I'll do full disclosure, I attended this school, so that dates me. Um, we've been here 70 years as a school and 50 years as a board education office. Um, it's well past time to do something, either renovate or new, uh, for us to do something. And I think, in all fairness to staff and Dr. Salins, which is her staff, the board needs to weigh in on what direction. Well, we Unless we feel adamant that we're gonna go one way or the other. I think we need some more, need to have more conversations with the staff and Dr. Salins, honestly. I think My the board, point. I think, the, I mean, <laughs> So at some point, we're going to have to make a vote, right? Apparently, what's being put on down. us. Do we want to do that before we start soliciting all these proposals and well, RFQs? And yeah, the, the decision motion. has to be made because at, at some point, because we can't really move forward with any RFQ or anything like right. that until is it going to be a renovation or new construction? Because you're just going to be spinning your wheels and not having a full document ready to, to go out. So do we set this in on a future agenda to make a well, The commissioners vote? have asked us to bring it to you all. That's why we are here okay. tonight to, mm -hmm. to discuss and, because and, and they and would like to move forward. They, they are asking us, when are you putting it out? And I said, well, we kind of need to make sure that the, board's the all board, because I'm new to this position, I need to make sure that th this board supports that because I wasn't here for the past you know, background I um, why quick, they did the feasibility study. Question about the money. When were the... Um, numbers plugged in like was this before the building explosion where it was it was this was last July so we are looking at numbers now they did give us a little bit of an inflated cost um, I believe it was through the fall of last year but yes we definitely have some circumstances happening within the industry that potentially could make some difference here but we would be looking at that as part of the design process and doing cost estimates along the way to see where that's falling to make sure we don't end up with a pitfall at the time of bid. And I think if we're looking seriously as a dollar thing, 
things can change, I think we're going to be a lot closer with our number on new construction than renovation. I think there's going to be more un you know, more variables in renovation that would up that if we're looking strictly at dollars. And I think this board needs to look at dollars, but also um, I, you can renovate anything. And probably a lot of it, when we say renovation, would be torn down and rebuilt, I'm thinking, because you know, we've talked about ADA not compliance with our stairs, our hallways are wide, and you, you know, not as good a space. Um, you know, for the people that don't know it, we're sitting in a gymnasium. We're on the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this, is, this is a drop ceiling. Uh, there's a lot of things that, Which you know. Which would be great for a community theater if it was repurposed, right? Uh, you know, and that's another thing. I mean, yeah, there's things that can be done. I mean, we have, and, you know, Dr. Sands discussed it, we have the CTE programs. We have, a, you know, calling street down at Chesapeake. Could some of that be moved in this building? Um, we have a warehouse out by the uh, middle school. If we redo our middle school, um, do we need more space? Maybe move our transportation department in here. I know you said you don't want to drive through town, but <laughs> that's an idea. It's all right. It's all good. Back in the 90s when I was a school board member, we talked about a magnet school. Yeah. You know, and if we, would this be something for that? I mean, but that's a decision, you know, the board and the commissioners need to make if we go with a new building. Now, if, did we not have a discussion where they said even with, because we did not see the plans yet for the renovation, that even after the renovation, we still would not be ADA compliant? Is we that accurate? We would not accurate? be to today's standards right. ADA compliant. So we would need to get that redone to make sure, because we would want to be, obviously, and need to be ADA compliant. This building yeah. isn't capable of right, we don't in its have current okay. state. Yeah. Okay. So There's that one. was my question. It, for ADA compliant, should... Should they decide to revise this building, <clears throat> could they make zones of it ADA compliant to today's standards? Potentially. And so it's not necessarily tied as much to ADA compliance as it is to code compliance overall. So what we found when we did the study was that, and anyone who has gone from the first to the second floor knows that it's a hike and that it takes a lot of your breath when you go up. That's because the rise of the stairs is much higher than it should be for today's standards. Anytime you are renovating a building, you are required to bring it up to current standards. We're not able to change that distance between the first and the second floor floor unless we completely take out the second floor. So there would be a manner in which we were not meeting code compliance in a renovation unless we essentially kept the shell of this building and took everything else out. Okay. So my next question would be, doesn't the bidding or the face of this change if you're going to involve putting a school-based, like a RISE Academy within e either building? Doesn't the funding source change? It can. The issue here is that our Arise Academy students are tied to their home schools. Mm -hmm. So our Arise program is not a school entity in and of itself, and it would need to be to qualify for any state funding. So it's possible, but it opens up quite a, a bit. Just the fact quite a number of things otherwise. But just the fact that they're physically sitting in that space doesn't qualify. No. So each school has a, a, their own code, mm -hmm. and that's the code they would fall under. So Arise does not have to, you know, the state of Maryland, their own code. Mm -hmm. There's no funding associated with that streamline. Okay. But if we decide to include, like, a CTE program space, then that would change. Yes, then potentially, is... yes. As a future project, if we were to incorporate some sort of student learning, then yes, there would be dollars available from the state. It would potentially still require the county match for that, which at this point is 51% state, 49% county contribution. Okay, thank you. I mean, you know, when you look at this building, if you're out front, to the right is the old part of the building that was built in about 1900. Then everything else has been added on, and then this back section and the back where Sid's office and everybody is the cafeteria when I was here. So, you know, I 100% think it needs to be retained, especially the historical part of it. I think, I think that has to happen, and I think... Uh, that's a commissioner's challenge along with us. If we, if we have some use for it, they might have some use for it. Michelle, I think your office in the health department is probably a little outdated, isn't it? Oh, it's it's a relic. Yeah. Maybe they could come down here. I, I, you know, but that's a county decision. But 100% is if we move out of here and build a new building, it would be out of our hands of what they do with it. You know, mm -hmm. we turn it back over to the, to the thing. Um, so, Dr. Salins, why wasn't this an action item tonight? 
because you don't have to, we just need direction. You don't have to vote on that because the, the county commissioners have the money there and they've already voted. I, I they've already voted. They voted five, oh, I thought last spring to move forward with a new bill. Um, and so we're basically asking, again, to make sure that this board, since we're all new board together, that, that we are agreeing to move in that direction. And not that we're getting thrown underneath the bus. But for, I guess that's a good sure, term. It sure does. Huh? It sure does feel like it. Well, though. we probably do. But there's a little contention in the commissioners of building a new building, renovating it, or stopping this whole thing completely. But that's, we're not. When in, last year we had, I mean, they were like in high gear. Things change every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, you know, they, they, they're on the track. And yes, they're trying to put some pressure on us to sit there and say, you know, and I think we need to respond to them. That, uh, so next meeting? respond to them tonight. I, I mean, I have my ideas and we can all discuss that. And if we're on a, in a, in a group, group consensus, we can do it. And if we don't, you know, they, they've recommended a new building. I recommend that I have no problem with that. I think we need, our staff needs to be in more updated facilities. I am dead set against uh, demolishing this building mm -hmm. as a whole. I think that that would be terrible both for the town and everything else. And I think we can work with that mm -hmm. and find other things. But I don't know if waiting six months or a year, we need to come up with some ideas. We started some ideas. But in all fairness to some people, two years ago when this was on the table, I did mention to some people that are in the Alumni Association, what, you know, this is coming, this is not something that's coming to us now or to commission. This has been on our uh, capital been budget for a while. 10 years. Right. So, you know, and all of a sudden, they don't want to do it. Well, that's fine, you know? But I even asked, I said, what about the Kipla? We'll move it to the new building. What what, what we keep, you know, what would make the things aesthetic to everybody? Well, nobody does it until the last minute and everybody goes nuts. And I just think we, it's not fair to the new superintendent, or even the old superintendent, or their staff. This board needs to sit there and have some direction. And are we, right now, the commissioners want to move forward with a new building out there? And if anybody's got a lot of heartburn up here about doing that, say it. And if they Thank don't, you. then we need to move forward. I'd, I'd like a recommendation that we do not, we look for alter, alternate uses for this building. And mm -hmm. we could be part of that. Again, that would be the county's decision to do that once it's turned over to them. Exactly right. Okay, but, just but, clarifying. But that we, we don't, we, we can offer them suggestions of what we think should happen to it, but it is ultimately their decision once we, we turn it When we suggest a CTE program here, well, or I, move the warehouse here, yeah. we're going to also ask them for a large amount of money to do that. And they might say no. Well, that's an idea we had. I'm sorry, you know? Okay. Our job is to make sure we function properly. And so I think Mike, we need to look at timeline too, because the timeline set out puts us right up to um, completing mm -hmm. that project along the timelines that the commissioners had set forth. Mm. Um, if we don't give a direction, then we kick the can down the road and we'll get off our timeline there and we have capital projects that follow that one. So we have Colonel, I mean, um, we have uh, Centerville Middle School that we really need to, to look at. And, um, and if we delay, delay, delay this project, we're gonna end up delaying other projects that really need to be addressed. And Centerville Middle needs to be addressed. Yes. So I, Sooner you know, that's rather why than later. I think there's a little sense of urgency that we try to stay on a timeline mm -hmm. to be able to address both of those needs within the school district. I've just been more comfortable if it had been an action item, we could have you know, had been voted on it and that we'd be done with it. Well, That's all I can You should make a motion. Make a motion. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it's not on agenda for action, but it, it's open for information mm -hmm. and discussion. And if some member would like to make a motion, feel free to make it. Uh, well, we can make a motion. I'll make a motion to vote on um, a recommendation to move forward to the commissioners on the current BOE building. Um, I kind of tend Second. to go, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do we need to amend the agenda first? Um, motion to no, move. she can make a motion during the discussion. Okay. But clarify your discussion. Are you saying you want a new building? What I'm saying is that I think that I could get behind a new building knowing that we have not ever torn down an old building, um, that I would feel comfortable that the commissioner, especially with that impassioned letter from the commissioner a couple weeks ago of um, how important it is to keep our heritage and, and green space and, and ruralness, that they will make a really good decision about um, the building once it's back in their hands. So, And I do think we'll have some issues when they start tearing stuff down, um, but I would like to see our initial design money come down because it shouldn't be more than 7% of the total amount. I, I think that we're giving way too much away for design. Way too much. To point of order. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I believe when a member makes a motion and it's been seconded, we have 
just for the president. Yeah, no, no, for the president to clarify exactly I'm, I'm, what the I'm, motion I'm going, is. I'm going to go over this when we get in after the discussion. I'm going to make sure we understand what we're voting on. I can assure you. Okay, you want to do that before discussion? So but you, you know she's well, no, I want discussion to see because we we might have some friendly amendments. I mean, I can tell you right off the bat, I'd like us to put in this amendment that we highly recommend retaining the historical value of this building. Yeah. It's and that's our recommendation, uh, and we recommend to move forward. I agree with Helen there, uh, and I don't know what other members would like to see, and then we'll get the whole thing and we can reread it again. So, you so are you, did you finish? Tom? Yes, I'm finished. So, okay. so when I signed on in December, when I was sworn in, uh, I heard a lot of complaints about this building, and unfortunately, uh, it was coming from the staff who were who have to work in this building every day, you know, and. Um, uh, things with the uh, the odors of sewage uh, in a lot of the offices, you know, the heat, the AC, uh, the roof caving in on on one unfortunate uh, board uh, employee. Um, so. You know, that, that's what I've heard, and I, I would be for moving forward with a new building. Uh, just for that quality of life of the staff mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and how that translates into productivity and everything else going straight to our students. Mm -hmm. so. I, would, I would love to move forward and with a laundry list of ideas, what they can do with this building to enhance the community and the school system so it's still part of the school system. So I've got a running list. <laughs> and we have already, I let the commissioners know that we will partner with them and we've asked Ms. Um, Janet Pauls to um, work with them and developing uh, an opportunity to have a committee that would look at how could this building be repurposed for the best use of the community. So we, we absolutely have already extended a partnership to be able to support um, the next phase for this building, even though we know that the ultimate decision is for the commissioners. So point of a clarification on the motion, the motion is to move forward with a new building mm -hmm. for the Board of Education with the hope that the commissioners will take into consideration our recommendations for this building. Correct. Okay. I just want like to clarify to what we're voting on. And we feel very strongly that it has a certain distance in this community and we would like to see it retained as much as possible and as a partner with them, we look at some ideas. I think they I want to speak out of school. Have they already spoken to you, Janet, as far as being on the committee? So we have people that are well aware uh, of the school system that can do that. What are all of our needs? Um, and then it would, we would move forward with a new building. But in saying that, we feel strongly that the historical value of this building has significant value to the community. And we'd mm -hmm. like to retain that as much as possible. Um, Okay, that's the reason why I clarify because that's what I'm on board for. Did, I just want to clarify. Terminal, is that? Yes, that's great. Okay, I just want to clarify. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mrs. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Schipanelli? Yes. Mrs. Bennett? Yes. Thank you. So, unanimously, we'd like to send, I guess, to Patty or Dr. Salins. You can just uh, inform the commissioners Absolutely. that the board feels, you. you know. But I, but I really want to emphasize. We got this letter, and I think this building has significant value, especially certain parts of it. It's, it's yes. at different levels of it, and it's different levels to everybody else. But it is a um, you know, valuable asset. And I think if you look at Streetscape coming down Centerville, it uh, makes, a, makes a big difference in this town. Well, and it bucks I up thank too. you for your support. I know that. I think that um, mm -hmm. our team certainly believes that is the right, right place to go. Um, and I know that we will do everything we can to partner to make sure that this building continues to have value. Um, but I, I do thank you for taking the time to really talk about it, discuss it, and I will make sure that um, actually um, Mr. Pinder and I already met with the commissioners once. We will go back to the table with them and let them know the exact timeline now that we have that in stone and start moving forward, get the gears rolling, and um, Ms. Pauls will start as well with the committee work with um, the commissioners to ensure that we come up with some really good ideas. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 302, Vision of Safe Return to In-Person Instruction for Community Services Plan. Amy. Make a motion. Make a motion. This is a stumbling of this is what we've had once before. 
Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team members. Um, I had presented the uh, safe return to in-person instruction continuity of services plan at the last board meeting. And um, I had, Mr. Smith had asked me specifically if any adjustments were made for me to come back at least to let the board know and to make you aware. So at the time of my initial presentation, I had talked to you about that we had just um, received the rubric um, in order to <coughs> give us further guidance, which was huge for us. And um, I also had shared that we still had the ANS retreat the following week. And um, so all of the administrators and the supervisors had an opportunity to um, look at the plan and provide some feedback. The only changes that were made were adjustments to um, reflect the rubric. They were not huge changes. Um, some of it reflected language and, and let me back up just a minute. We also um, had an opportunity this morning, the Blueprint um, Implementation Committee met this morning. Um, Michelle is on that committee so um, she can she can um, attest to the fact that it's, it's finished, it's published, the actual document um, that was required for submission to MSD was done last week. And the blueprint committee looked at it and there were some adjustments to language, just words that um, are now being used versus, because the language within education changes, it's very fluid. So we wanted to make sure that we were current and relevant. So um, those adjustments have not yet been made, but we will. So. In wrapping up, and in summary, this document is a fluid document, and I had shared that the last time. And we will um, continue to make adjustments. We are actually charged with looking at this document at the least every six months up until the year 2024. So we, um, as I said, we posted it on the web, web um, page, but we also included an email that is specific to feedback from parents, community, anyone. So um, we're always taking in recommendations for adjustments. So basically this is a moving plan too. Pardon me? This is a moving plan. Yes, it's a, very fluid, Mr. Smith, very fluid. So um, yeah, and it's it, a lot of it will be based on the things that are happening. So we will adjust as necessary. And minor adjustments with anything that could come from it come we'll get updated on that on a quarterly or semi-annually basis yes but so, so and as i said it's we have to look at it at least every six months okay. so i mean if i get a recommendation i'm not going to run in and adjust it what we'll do is we'll just accumulate look at it and then we'll revisit it and it won't be a person it will be a stakeholder group so we will pull in educators mm -hmm. um community and we very well may do it through the blueprint uh, say, implementation committee because they already are versed on it we did talk about having a meeting um, the fourth week in September after school has been open to revisit it with yes. the advisory, the blueprint advisory group. And Carrie sent they, that doodle because, invite out. Right, yeah. because mm -hmm. they they just, um, they're such a strong group because they really do um, encapsulate a lot of our stakeholders. So um, we talked about that just today that we yeah. would be coming back together and that will be an opportunity to review it at that time um, and make any additional adjustments. As, as And what a hard working group they are. They are. Uh -huh. They are. Uh -huh. I mean, they are very, very engaged, very supportive, very engaged. Yeah. So, any questions for me? Anybody on the board? And it's on the web. Web. You have it. It's it's a, a copy, but it's also on the web page, so you can look at it. I did see. Um, we changed the format. Um, and I know when I first presented, I think Mr. Schipanelli, you were were you here, Miss Bennett? Yes, you were because yeah, I remember I mentioned the clam strips. Um, but I, you weren't here, so you didn't get to see it at that time. But it is on the web page, and we changed the format, and um, the communication specialist did that. It looks very nice. Yeah, just trying to make a little user friendly yeah, for and it is. the community. Yep. Be able to get to anywhere in the document just from your content page, which if you just want to look at one specific part, right. you don't no, have I to kind of scroll it. Yes, and you can click yes. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, ch did you uh -huh. look at it? Oh, I did. Perfect, thank no, you. No, it looks great. Yeah. 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 Good. So any members have any further discussions? Thank you, Amy. Thank You're you. welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay.
Our next subject with 303 face covering discussion. Mr. President, I move to amend the guidance on health and safety news release dated 16 August 2021. On the first bullet, I suggest the change make to universal face coverings are recommended for all staff and students in all buildings and on buses. And then to add a bullet saying directing staff and students to stay home when sick or have signs of any infectious illness. Second. A motion, second discussion. Have we have anybody going to give us some information on this this evening? Well, um, board members, you do have, since it's a discussion item, you do have everything in your packet. Um, it does include all the requirements that are mandated by the federal government, federal government. through the CDC. Um, for example, on school buses, it's mandatory through the federal government that um, they have to be masked on buses. That's just an example right. of something that we have to follow. Um, while the recommendation might not be um, strongly recommend for in the class Room, but on school buses, it is a mandate. We can't. We can't. Yes. No. I'm sorry. I should have, yes, I should have separated that. those out. So yes, I would say universal face coverings are recommended for all staff and students in all buildings. Period. And then you can do another bullet for they're required on the buses since that is the, the mandate. So the, so basically, you want it recommended, not required. Correct. Um, I'll just weigh in a little bit. Uh, point of order. Uh, point of order, mm -hmm. Mr. President. Um, yes, the I person have... who made the motion, the member, is actually entitled to speak to the motion first. Okay. I don't know if you're. No, I do. I would like to speak about why I'm making the amendment, and I wrote it down so I would stay quick and, and easy. This community, every community, is facing challenges such as never been experienced before. No matter the decisions made, nor by whom, it is very important to remember that we are all part of the same community, the Queen Anne's County community the same community that comes to our needs every time a member needs it. That's who we are. And this is not a time to be ugly to each other, but to respect the decisions that each family makes for themselves. This, regu this respiratory virus is not going away. Because it has an animal reservoir, it cannot be eradicated. to stay for the rest of our lives, our children's lives, our children's children's lives, and forever. Until, well, until. So we are going to need to find a way to live with it. Each of us will do so in our own way, just as we have for every other virus, bacteria, disease, or any other danger that we now face in this world. But I am adamant that each parent has the right to make that decision for their child. We don't think there is a parent in Queen Anne's County that wishes harm on any other child, or we're not willing to sacrifice for every other child in this community because we are. There are no bad intentions here. If your research has led you to the conclusion that face masks work, then wear a face mask and believe it is working for you. If your research has led you to the conclusion that face masks do not work, then do not wear a face mask and know that not masking is working for you. I do not feel that this board has the right nor the authority to tell you what is best for your children right. when it comes to this topic. A multitude of studies on the CDC website, and I, you know, I take CDC as it is, but there's a lot of studies utilizing a multifaceted approach to mitigation is the best defense against spreading the virus. These protocols include many different things, and no matter the mix, whether you mask or not mask, social distancing, whatever you use, as long as there were a variety of protocols, the percentage of decrease in COVID spread was the same. By our own admission last year, when there was a case of virus, the teachers could not, nor should they have to, tell which students were properly masking. So all the students were quarantined. So if we think wearing masks will help in this way regarding quarantines, it's clear it does not. When I went to visit the schools earlier this year, every single elementary and every single middle school, I can say that easily half of the students and some of the teachers were not wearing their masks in the manner recommended. I would even argue this leads to a false sense of security. And it should not be the job of the educator to be the mask police. Do they not have enough to do as it is? Yeah. 
Everything about this virus is new and fluid. What is right today may not be right tomorrow or the day after. What we know today may not be what is known a year from now. Parents should have the right to determine the best for their children. We have compassion for all children, we do. But one child's needs should not usurp another's. Do what is best for your children and allow others to do the same. Do your research and then make your decision. And one last note, if you buy groceries, shop, eat out, church, work, travel, have family get-togethers, play dates, playground, play sports, gym, yoga, library, county buildings, ice cream, farmer's market, pool. In other words, you live, there is a risk. Let us each decide the risks we are willing to take for ourselves. Freedom includes freedom of choice and the alternative is isolation and that is no alternative at all. Anybody else have any further? Sure. So <clears throat> I did do my research, <clears throat> and uh, I wrote. There's a lot of information down there. I wrote my notes down, so if it sounds like I'm reading, I actually am. So right now, Maryland has no mask mandate, indoors or outdoors. We can enter the grocery stores, restaurants, county buildings, and offices, and not wear face coverings. <clears throat> And we do do that. It's evident when I go around town uh, that the vast majority of adults and children are carrying out their daily activities and business without masks. Waiters, waitresses, lecturers, lectured, consumer proprietors. <clears throat> I don't see masks being worn by probably 95% of the adults when I'm out. <clears throat> Certainly, the majority of us are not wearing masks for seven and eight hours at a time each day because it's uncomfortable, it's unnatural, it causes dyspnea, which is that feeling that you can't get a breath, <clears throat> and so on, so we don't do it. The vaccine has been available increasingly since in, in around December 2020, and we can safely assume that those in the county who wanted the vaccine have had opportunity to get it, and those who that are inclined not to get it have made their decision. Currently in the county, about 53% of the population is fully vaccinated, both, both sets of vaccinations, uh, which is just a few percentage points below the state. According to Dr. Ciotola, who we did meet with uh, individually, but we all met with him, he estimates that about 71% of our school-age kids in the county that are eligible to get the vaccination have done so. Of course, the 12-year-olds and below are not eligible for that vaccine uh, yet, or below 12 years. More facts. The strategy to stop the spread of COVID in the schools and in the county included not only the vaccine, but specifically the school's aggregation of practices that includes disinfect, disinfecting the building, especially the high touch areas, uh, self-screening, temperature checks uh, prior to entry, restricting entry for only students and, uh, and critical personnel, uh, social distancing, hand washing, outdoor ventilation uh, and filtering, et cetera other things. So masking has only been a part of what we've been doing even in the last year when we did go back to school. During the summer school program, between July and August, face coverings were optional. And then that was the uh, superintendent's decision. She went uh, without the face masks, and uh, I, I commend her for that. There were no reported outbreaks, or excuse me, there were no reported um, COVID cases of transmissions, certainly not transmitted from student to student or student to teacher. So the adverse effects of COVID on children are much lower <clears throat> than on adults. We do know that. Children are much less likely to suffer adverse effects. Um, Dr. Ciotola has confirmed that whereas the Delta variant is more transmissible, its effects are not as severe and includes low-grade uh, fever, sore throat, chest congestion, when I spoke to him about that. He also told me that between June 1st and yesterday, I checked online yesterday, the county had a total of approximately 265 uh, positive cases. 46 of these have been children between newborn and 18. None have been hospitalized, and according to Dr. Ciotola, the Delta variant has been identified through pathology in at least 75% of the total county cases. Meeting with him, he confirmed, including through his independent study here in the county, that masking does increase the CO2, CO2 level in the bloodstream. Because currently there is a decrease of O2. We all know how important O2 is to the body and to the brain. In controlled studies with children, increases in CO2 levels occurred within three minutes of them donning a mask. Some of the known immediate effects of this imbalance includes headaches and loss of concentration. And that was from Dr. Ciotola. <laughs> Thank you. 
What is not known, because no studies have been completed for obvious reasons, time, time constraints or time reasons, is the long-term physiological effects of continued imbalances between C2 and O2 levels lasting between seven and eight hours a day on children whose bodies and brains are still in development, including during the development spurt, spurts that occur in early childhood and during puberty. The long-term physiological effects, as well as effects on emotional development, I'm sorry, long-term psychological effects, as well as effects on emotional development are just, are just as unknown for the same reasons, although much has been conjectured by reputable psychologists and experts in psychology. So I think what's in the balance here is mandating mandatory masks to stop the spread and to keep kids getting infected, but which needs to be weighed heavily against the known immediate physiological changes in the bloodstream and in its side effects, coupled with the unknown long-term psychological and emotional effects that we just don't know, and we're not going to find out for <laughs> So from the, what I've gathered, it, the crux concerns, or the crux of the concern of the parents and other advocates for you know each perspective. One is the masking. I, I don't believe it's uh, anything political or something that's been alleged, and I have to say this. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, batting going on out there between the, the communities. Um, but it's more the parents who do not want their children suffering these aforementioned side effects from masks. They're making the case for parental choice by invoking the rights and freedoms outlined in various laws, not least of all the Constitution. So I don't think it's a political. I don't think it's a political uh, issue. Uh, however, it comes down to a matter of choice. And when it comes down to a matter of choice uh, and, and rights, uh, I have to come down. Well, let me tell you this. It's not a hard, it's not an easy decision to make. I've spoken to the superintendent. I under her, understand her perspectives. I respect them. Yes. Uh, I've uh, spoken to other persons about it. And um, uh, it's not an easy decision to make. And I, I can understand both sides. But when it does come down to parental choice and, and parental rights, I'm, I'm falling on that. I'm erring on that side. Um, it is a tough decision, and I think if we all had a perfect world, I would go with no mask at all. I think it's an hindrance and has a lot of things on that. I've been up here for over two years, and 18 months ago, like that, we shut this school system down. We had to go virtual, which was, was, was to me hard. In September, we stayed virtual. And we tried to get back as close as we could to normal. Finally, this spring, we got back to a hybrid program where our children could go back three days a week. We are planning to go back in September full time. And whatever we can do to err on the, to me on the side of safety, I would like to do that. We talk about masks, they're uncomfortable, I grant you that. But we also are looking at some other options, face shields that would give people more options. If we can social distancing in schools that our classrooms aren't that heavily populated, we could work with that. I'm all for having, if we have to take some learning ability time away in our school systems, let the principals decide to make sure these kids get out and have recess and stuff of that nature. I'm all that. Hopefully, this will calm down in a couple weeks. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Uh, please, please, just, just like, with Dr. Comment, just respect everybody. We will have public comment September the 1st at our meeting, and everybody is welcome to come back here and have comment. Um, and certainly I've had a lot of comments by emails. I think we all have as a board. Uh, I've had a lot of phone calls. Somehow um, it's a good phone number, so it works well. At least a lady that's uh, trying to sell me a car warranty is not getting me as much. But. Um, you know, it's a difficult decision, like Mark said, uh, and I just, I just think everybody just needs to take a deep breath, and you know, whatever decision this board makes will be for the best interest of what we feel of the students. And I, I, understand, I see you shaking your heads and don't agree, but I'm just, that's my view of it, and uh, I want kids back. I've, I've had discussions with some of you face to face on the phone. I've met some, some new folks here. I understand both sides of this. My kids are in these schools. My kids don't want to wear a mask. I get it. I don't want to wear a mask. 
but my kids also want to be in school as much as they possibly can five days a week. Virtual learning did not work for my kids. And I sit on this board and I helped to make that decision to keep it virtual because of the numbers. This is right now. This is not forever. <laughs> so the goal is to keep kids in school five days a week as much as possible. If one child gets COVID and those around aren't vaccinated, aren't masked, that's 14 days out of the classroom and you are responsible for getting the work for that child. There's no virtual option. We don't have the staff to do that. That's good kid comes back two days later gets exposed again that's another 14 days out of the classroom it, and now we're learning loss again we're addressing I'm learning loss again data. that's my question i'm <laughs> sorry i'm not done speaking okay. i'm but not we're, done we're speaking. not having a comment back with just please listen to the board members we're, we listened outside and like i said september the first have comments and you got our emails thank you the goal is to keep the kids in the classroom as much as possible, not miss out so many days of school. Last year, everybody was screaming to get them back in, screaming for five days a week, no matter what you had to do. We're in that situation. The numbers are going up. I see the list every single day. I see the number of pediatric cases that hit that list every single day. This county, Kent County, Caroline County, doesn't have a hospital with a pediatric unit. This state has 22 pediatric ICU beds. Yes, most kids won't end up there, but what if one kid does? We have seven, we have 7,000 children that we have to make a decision for. You are making a decision for your child. We have to make a decision for 7,000 plus the staff and faculty here. So all we ask is to please work with us to try to make the best of this. The 30% get a choice. You know, I get as many emails that say, you're making the right choice as I get that tell me I'm wrong and I'm being selfish. Well, the selfish part is I want kids in school this year. I don't want them virtually learning. I don't want them missing assignments. I want them learning. I just heard science on that side. I'm a nurse. No I work in this side. every single day. I swab no people. Science. I vaccinate no people. Science. I'm in this. Hold, hold on one second. If my we're not, hold on, Michelle. We're I'm not having this. public comment. Right. Helen got to speak. Mark got to speak. I got to speak. Please let the rest of the board members speak. You know, the bad part of this is we're elected to do this job at the best of our ability. And we are listening to people. Don't think you're, you're not being unheard. But we have to make this decision. We're going to try to make it the best we can. And that's all I can say. But we don't have, it's going to be a lot smoother with everybody in here if we'd listen. And I'm sorry it's not public comment, but our policy is over the last years is the first meeting of the month. And that's what it is. So thank you. I'm finished. I have a couple questions, Amy. if I might, mm -hmm. please. So is there any leeway in the students if they are masked going into the classrooms when they sit down, can they take their masks off? They're within three to six feet apart, socially distanced like this. Yes, they can. Okay, and relatively most of our elementary schools have that capability? Most of them. Most. Um, right. I know some of them have higher class numbers than others, so I'm at, that's why I'm asking, because the littles need to have their masks off. Right, but we have also removed furniture out to create more space in there, so we can try to do as much social distancing as possible. And I read this, I read all this, and, and I saw that in there that whenever possible, it will be. Uh, I had a couple teachers uh, email me saying that they would have um, no mask time. They would find ways. Uh, a music teacher said she would be taking her students outside for have them sing to give them more air to give them space yeah um, so face shields how are face shields going to be implemented if we're allowing them to do face shields rather than these masks I don't know, I know your question we would provide them if they ask no but I mean them. if if a student has a face shield a clear face shield rather than this are they going to be allowed to go through the school yes okay it's a so, face covering it's a face covering yeah. so long as, as no so long as there. it's not this yes no. and, it, and it has the face shield where they can see the teachers they can be seen they absolutely. can absolutely any any face covering is acceptable um, the only thing is that on the bus because it's a federal mandate that's not mandated by us okay. they have to it's 
designated as a mask. And then there's a frequently um, asked question document in here for the board where it asks specifically about face shields and the federal government said no, not on yeah, public um, transportation. Okay. So, but in the schools, yes, any face covering is acceptable. So do we have enough substitutes? This has been a question from staff members and community alike. Do we have enough substitutes to cover if an outbreak occurs in a school? Well, certainly there's a threshold. We don't we, we don't have as many substitutes as we typically had before COVID. Um, so we do have some substitutes, but it would depend on how many people would be quarantined. It is certainly a very large concern, um, especially as it relates to something like our bus drivers. Even that, I mean, if we, we don't have substitute drivers, we have like two that can jump up to the plate and help us out. So um, without having that, you gotta be able to have people to transport students to school. You have to be able to have your cafeteria workers and they work so closely together that that would be a concern. Um, but as so, it relates to staff, that is a staffing concern, absolutely. If we were to constantly have to quarantine staff members, it would be that we might not be able to have the substitutes necessary. And therefore, we'd have to either close a building down or potentially close everybody down. And we don't have the wherewithal to go back into a virtual situation? No, that is not an option. Not at this time? Not at this time. Because we don't have the funds? No. Yeah, nor the staff. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not a decision. So it's an expectation the state superintendent was very clearly articulated that that all students would be back to face-to-face -face instruction for the school year. I mean, that was been said many, many times by Dr. Karen Sam, and of course now we have a new state superintendent. Um, and is this new state superintendent also mandating masks in the schools, or is he leaving it to county to county? I just want this well, to be clarification. Have, he can't mandate it, but he can strongly recommend, which he did. There's a, also a memo that's in there that state that's a joint memo with the CDC the Maryland, I saw that yes the, the Maryland State Department of Education and the uh, Maryland Health Department that jointly came together to write a memo to superintendents um, and school district boards to say we uh, strongly recommend okay that's all the questions I had thank you I have another question about quarantining though are is there um, mandated quarantine Yes, there is. A certain amount of time. Which is under the federal and that's a mandate. That's a How mandate. Long time? And they did okay. change them this year. They did change them this year. They're online. They're also right. in here. Right, so this are, we, are we following the lease? Because I have a real, like I said, a real concern because the, um, one question I know when we were talking, one thing was, well, we want to limit how many people are quarantined. But as I mentioned, you said that we had had an opportunity last year where there were kids that tested positive and because they couldn't tell who had the mask on right or not, they quarantined everybody. <laughs> So I'm not sure what the point is of a mask to help with the quarantining if you're going to quarantine them anyway because you can't tell who's wearing the mask. I don't know that situation. I mean, that was, that was Excuse me, I, d I didn't say anything to that effect because I, I wouldn't know that. I wasn't here last year, so I you know, I mean, I thought we did the, in our conversation with Dr. Ciotola that there were people who, the teachers That might have been him tell. saying that, but that certainly wasn't okay. me because right. I didn't have that knowledge. I wasn't here last year, so I don't have that knowledge. But okay. what I will say is that the new quarantining is um, whether if the student has a mask on, then they don't have to be quarantined as long as they're not symptomatic. So um, that makes a huge difference. Before, it was didn't matter, mm -hmm. and now it matters. And so that is a huge difference for us in how we go about quarantining and who we have to quarantine and for how long. And there are different scenarios in there from 14 days to 10 days, depending on when you get tested. You can get tested at day five and if you come back with a negative, there's a lot of different scenarios in there and that's actually attached to the um, the correspondence that I sent out on the 16th. There was a link in there that actually took you right to a chart that shows you that information. Okay. Do we have any other further discussion with the board? No. Okay, the motion, and I will repeat it, and if it's wrong, you please correct me, that we will do not mandatory, mandatory face mask in schools as proposed under current situation. And I want to put an advocate, this board for two weeks has asked Dr. Salen to send a letter out on the 16th because we did not want to wait to this last minute, two days before school, to know what's going on. So, and Dr. Salins, as a superintendent, is in charge of our school system. 
um, with, with policy set by this board. So I don't want anybody to think, you know, and I know a couple members asked, can we move it to Wednesday? We said 16th, it's up for vote, and then we'll, we'll move forward with that. Um, but the vote will be yes or no, up or down, for removing the mandatory masks and telling you please correct anything you'd like to say in it. Yeah, it was to make universal face coverings recommended for all state staff and students and that all the buildings and then the buses be another bulleted that because it's mandated, but then also to add the bullet that says, there's no bullet that says directing staff and students to stay home when sick or have signs of any infectious illness. I thought we should add that. Unless I missed it, that we would need to be two different. Well, that, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, as, as far as the board, because I, I, when we vote on things, I want everybody to be completely understanding. Right now, we're looking at federal mandated on the buses. We're we're at, we're mandating that currently mandating that people wear face coverings, i.e. face coverings or mask when they're in the buildings or in school, unless they're social distancing properly like we are doing here. Um, that's what we're looking at. Correct, or am I missing something? Well, right. You're saying not, you're saying to remove I'm, that. Well, no, we were gonna, sep I was gonna separate that first bullet because okay. the bus on, wearing them on buses is mandated. So, so I can't do anything motion. about that. Okay. But I had asked that the universal face coverings are recommended for all staff and students as the bullet, separating out the buses because that was mandated, mm -hmm. and then adding an additional bullet that um, just says directing staff and students to stay home when sick or have signs of any infectious illness because that was one of the big protocols that helped bring down um, COVID cases if you're sick okay. or you and have- That was included in the news release. <clears throat> okay, I, I didn't see it on the, the, on the news release, so, so I apologize. It's a part of the protocol. It's self self-check. Yeah, yeah, it's part of the protocol yeah. for staff and students. It was under the, the list that was in- Oh, that's interesting. Cause I okay, cause I just I don't I didn't see it on yeah, here. Self check. So. Okay, that's what it's called. So okay, I think you might you might have been looking for different language. Yeah, I think I was looking for different. So okay, yeah. So right now, uh, we're requiring face shields or coverings in our schools, and the motion is to make it voluntary. That we recommend it, but not mandate it. It's your motion, but I think the oh, motion is I just want to, to make it optional. Straight because this is going to be a thing, and I don't want anybody to be confused. To make I'm mandatory face coverings optional, I believe, is the motion, if I can phrase it. Yeah, universal <clears throat> face coverings are recommended for all staff and students, and they're mandated on buses. That would be my recommendation. That's your motion. That's my motion. And we have a second. Yes. We've discussed it. Any further discussion? Can we call? No. Mrs. Morissette? No. Mr. Smith? No. Mr. Schipanelli? Yes. Mrs. Bennett? Yes. <clears throat> Are you going to have our county? We have a thousand, uh, 1,020 parents in Keenan County who have signed petitions. Why we're not hearing what the public thinks. I can't wait until September 1st to make a decision for my kid. It's going to affect where she goes to college. Okay. Okay. So I don't understand if you're for the people, why you can't hear what the people are saying. We, we, and the majority of people in Keenan County are saying drop the master. Listen, we, 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 Mr. The board, President, the board has voted on this. We've made a decision. Uh, I'm going to move on with our next agenda. I'm more than happy to stay. If you don't want to stay, Mr. President, motion. My children from your office. Touched his mask. Lot of hospital workers here. We work in it every day. Every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those two people right there? It's gonna grow. We work to get them in. I will work to get you out. I am George Krug. K R U G. Okay, okay. Write that down. <laughs> Write it down because you need to This board's gonna take a Mr. Krug. This is Martin Minute Board's gonna take a five process. Good evening. Welcome back to our school board meeting uh, for August 18th. Uh, we're back in session. Thank you. Mr. President, <clears throat> I move to amend the uh, August 16th, 2021 uh, letter from the superintendent in regards specifically to uh, the last bullet on the page, which states those who are eligible, oh, I'm sorry, QACPS will encourage those who are eligible to get vaccinated and uh, have that stricken from that news release. A second. Okay. Since you asked me earlier, I guess, your reasoning behind it, or just that's it? I got reasoning behind it. I mean, I don't care, but you just No, I, I, I do. Uh, so what this 
basically policy or directive is saying is that the schools are going to encourage, I suppose, kids and adults, parents in this case, to get vaccinated. I strongly feel, are, are we waiting for Ms. Harper or she? No, she, she should be back in some point. I'm not going to wait. Oh, we have to wait. Oh, that's why I said I just asked them to go okay, get her. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I don't think calls. she was aware that you were going to make another motion. And she should hear Yeah, I, I didn't aware, wasn't aware she wasn't even here. <laughs> not derogatorily. Well, I should have taken Miss Carey up on that water. <clears throat> there's more there's in there. There's, there's a little bucket there. right there. No, I knew that. I was. Oh. It was kind of. I think she drinks that. What is she, she doing? Doesn't want to yes. drink a plastic or something. Yeah. There's a fill station upstairs. Yeah. Thank you. She went to the restroom. Okay. Jeff, are we, are we still being taped? Okay, uh, we're just waiting for one of our board members to return um, for this discussion. We will have to wait because our next few things will be uh, some action items that will be voted on along with this. Um, so just please hold on. Go grab some pretzels. Grab a soda. Well, we don't have either of those. I'm talking about our public. <laughs> oh. They're home. They can, I would grab they, one. <laughs> they, they can have a soda and some crackers and whatever they want to do. Do we know what happened to the little um, sponge things? covers? Hmm. I think they all, sometimes they tear. These used to be in the commission. I mean, not to right, be in the commission, commissioner's right. office. But I just so. remember I did have a cover at some point. It probably this. fell apart. They've deteriorated okay. over the, because you'll see the black soot or dust from them as they move around a lot. Oh, nice. We're here. Yes. When will our books be closed for last year? As far as our, will it be? Will we get information <coughs> on September? Uh, right. It's due, it's due to MSD by September 30th. The okay. um, annual report. The auditors are due on site next week. Okay. And we have our Ezra money now. When's a new flow come in at six or seven million dollars? When's that come in? ESSER 3? Uh-huh. 3, the grant application was due yesterday, and we're anticipating that we'll hear word by mid-September. Okay. We were uh, <clears throat> given an allocation of a little over 6.8. However, the application has to be approved. Now, it is a fluid document, so in the application, the different requests can can change as our needs change throughout but, the but the But the number that's being allocated to Queen Anne's County will be that. Yes, that's correct. And that number is based upon the state allocation that they've given us from Title I students. So we were actually the second lowest in the state of Maryland for <coughs> Title I. It was we don't have that many Title, Title, Title I. Funding. Okay. Now, is that money going to counties too? Because I heard the county got some, towns got some, and all this stuff. So It's part of the American Rescue Plan. Rescue plan they call it ARP. Mm -hmm. Is now the acronym that they're using for ESSER 3 is ARP funds. Okay. We'll be bringing that b before for your review September as well. And uh, one other thing too, I mean, while we're here, um, and I'll announce this at the end, we will be having discussion and on this every work session and meeting in the future. I mean, this is going to be a, an item uh, that will be on this thing. So we get, well, I know we get updates daily, weekly, different things, but we will always get this updates on a weekly basis. And hopefully the numbers will start falling.
Okay, Mark, can you start again? Sure. Everybody's here. We know what's going on. All right. So I made a motion to uh, amend the August 16th, 2021 news release. Um, to the extent uh, the last bullet be removed, <clears throat> and I'll read it out, it says QACPS will encourage, and then there's three bullets, and then the fourth one is those who are eligible get vaccinated, and I assume it means to get vaccinated. And uh, Ms. Uh, Bennett seconded the motion. Okay. And that's where we are, and I was going to uh, give your elaborate. Okay. Okay, so I think encouraging students or even parents to get vaccinated is not uh, what our schools should be doing. Um, this is not, uh, you know, our grandfather's uh, vaccination, so to speak. These are genetically engineered uh, vaccinations. They're new, and I've taken the information from the CDC uh, that essentially states that these are new uh, types of vaccines. Um, so in other words, it's not the mist that our kids got for flu or, or the flu shot, that kind of thing, that injected a weakened uh, version of the virus that they were trying to combat. So these are genetically engineered uh, vaccines. Now, I can understand why a lot of parents would be uh, hesitant to encourage their children or to have their children when they're authorized to get these vaccines. Um, and so what I'm afraid of is we're going to have parents at home saying, you know, son, we're not gonna get vaccinated, which I think is strictly their business, and along with their physicians, as we always say on this board. Um, and for the schools to start encouraging kids to get vaccinated after their parents said, don't get vaccinated, or are themselves not vaccinated, is gonna create a conflict that I don't wanna see the, the school board going down that road. Um, if you take a look at www.vaers.hhs.com, Gov. So that's Youth Health and Human Services for the federal government. They've got their uh, VAERS um, index. You can take a look at that. And you can see the adverse reactions that people have had to these new mRNA genetically engineered uh, vaccinations. And I can understand why people are hesitant to get these vaccinations, or even more importantly, to have their kids get these vaccinations. Um, death, if you just query death, it will come up. There's some 60, 70,000 entries uh, and death comes up much too often within two hours to 48 hours after receiving these vaccines. Um, the other, the balance of these uh, entries are all adverse side effects from one degree to another. So people can do their own research on that. But my point is that I can see why parents would counsel against getting this vaccine for themselves and their kids. I don't think the school board should be getting involved in encouraging either one of those parties to uh, be getting the vaccine. Yeah, well, just as a piece with it, I, I, I agree because I know in my discussion with Dr. Ciotola and the research I had brought when I came to have my discussion with him, I had read that this vaccination is the first one ever that, that can break through that blood brain barrier. barrier and he confirmed that yes he agreed that that and that's um, enough to be hesitant so I just I agree I think it's a decision that needs to be made um, within the families and and it does it would put some pressure on some people you know you, you get it all the sides from all the sides anyway you know do the right thing um, and I don't think that we should be a part of that you know, I, I think it said recommend. I mean, not certainly, we're not requiring it. And I've even said at these meetings in the past, I'd like to see people get vaccinated. I've been, um, but it's your choice and you should talk to a medical professional in your own situation and make that decision. That's a personal decision. I personally don't have a real problem with somebody saying we recommend it. Um, I think everybody should definitely talk to their physician and get what's right for them, their primary physician or somebody that has some expertise in it. And there's a wide variety of this out there, you know, as we all know. I mean, there's different sides of it. So, that would so be, I, I don't really, I don't think it, I mean, I think asking to recommend somebody to, to do that, it's certainly a choice. I, I would, I would jump up and down if anybody sat there and said do it. I think that it's 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 a personal thing. It's like getting a flu shot and other things. I mean, there are recommended shots, and I don't know the numbers that we have to have when we get into kindergarten and first grade. I don't know the, sure. who, who they are. This is not one of them. So this is, this is not mandatory. It's voluntary. 
I recommend it. Uh, I have no problem with uh, the superintendent saying she recommends it. I certainly think it should be your choice and you should get, if you have any hesitance, and even if you don't have it, talk to a medical professional. Get some professional advice if somebody knows what they're talking about. But that's my opinion. I don't. So the, the word is encourage, not recommend. Well, and encourage. Uh, what she said encourage? Quacks. QAC public schools will encourage those who are eligible to get vaccinated. Well, I'm saying encourage is less than, then I'm sorry, that's even less than recommend. She's not recommending anything. She's encouraging somebody to get it, but that's, you know. Well, it's it's the whole school system. So it's not the superintendent per se, it's the whole school system, which means teachers, guidance counselors, the whole kit and caboodle. So, so point if of you've order, got to, let me Mr. just Smith, Point of order, Mr. Oh. Smith, no. Mr. Mr. Schiffinelli has spoken to his motion. Now each of the members get to speak. Okay. I, I but, 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 but let, let Mr. Sch I'd rather hear his, what he has to say so then when somebody speaks, they can understand what back and forth. If that's not a problem, anybody, go ahead, Mark. Well, I, I digress. If, if it's a, it is a point of order, and uh, she's right. When all the board members are finished, I can, I can start. If we're going to do this, let's I'm, go ahead and do I'm, it right. I'm, if that's everybody wants, I'm trying to hope this is be as, not as cordial. I think we all need to express our opinions as forcefully and voice as we can. But I just want to make sure and understand. But Tammy, it's your shot. Now I need to ask a question. Why did this verbiage get put on this letter? I used it through the recommendations through the CDC in collaboration with the Maryland Health Department in collaboration with Dr. Ciotola, which is our local, in collaboration with um, the Maryland State Department of Education and the pediatrics information that we have. So all so, of that together was used to, collab to collectively five, five different agencies information that was recommended to the superintendents that's where I got all of my information from and each one of those bodies said will encourage that this is what we should be doing I don't you have a shall you have a shall and you have a will so we will encourage I don't know the answer to that I know they okay. all spoke to vaccinations and that um, they encourage vaccination for all because and the governor's even saying he said it again today where the mask mandated that everyone who works in a nursing home today gets vaccinated or, vaccinated. They are, or they have to test once a week okay so yes i mean but those five that's where i use my information from the five recommendations that come to the superintendents that's what i need okay thank you sure I just have a question. Do we have to have a motion to just simply ask you to change the wording or remove it? Well, will you change the wording and remove it? Uh, whatever the board. Here's, I, I'd rather go with the. I would rather go with the motion because then it's policy of this board. Okay. And so, if teachers are recommending to students, you know, hey, why didn't your parents get vaccinated? You're not vaccinated. Why don't you get vaccinated? You should get vaccinated because it's you know this stuff happens whether it's vaccinations or or something else. Um, and like I said, if it's the flu vaccine or the mist, fine. You know, our kids were getting it all along, and and it's it's we know the effects. This thing just went into production seven months ago and on into the field five months ago and uh, like i said there's a lot of, of bad results coming out there now they might be minuscule same with the kids that are getting or in proportion the, the percentage same with the kids that are getting sick and dying of COVID. but the fact is that that there are adverse effects so there's a risk to get this thing injected into you and it's a permanent you know, it, you're, you're changing your proteins in your in your cells. This uh, mRNA um, uh, gene is doing or vax. So I don't want to see parents make a decision, a healthcare decision, and then the kids go to school and they're getting encouraged to go against that. And maybe I'm the only you know one that thinks and things this way, but as a political science major and you know everything else, uh, that's what I got a habit of doing sociologically. So uh, I don't think this is in the purview of the school, especially at this point, 10 years from now, after we know it's safe and all the bugs are worked out and everything else, that's a different matter. But I think five months after this thing got fielded um, to start encouraging kids, possibly contrary to their parents' desires, I, I don't think the school needs to be in that business right now. I don't care if Governor Hogan said it or not. Can I ask a question? So how would we actually encourage, would we have signs up that say, 
Will we with with the with the stu with the teachers every day tell the students they have to they encourage them to get would they I mean literally would there be verb would it be signage would there be lights I mean are we that was just a simple statement that went out to parents so I that was a statement from me a news release that said I encourage everyone we wouldn't be doing that anywhere else I don't actually I mean if we strike it from there I'm not even sure how to communicate that do I send out another news release that says here's the news release from the 16th with a, a strikeout a removal of this and have a line through it I'm not sure what the purview of the board is and I'd be happy to you know um, do whatever uh, the board decides um, but no that was simply an encourage just like everything else on there it was encouraged yeah could just go on the website as an if we voted an, as an amendment on just where it's posted you know amended 8 20 whatever today is I don't even know what today is gotcha. you know I wouldn't I, sure I would don't think it would need to whatever the board uh, if, if it came out like that, I'm just saying I think that would be a simple fix and just to clarify no adolescent under 18 can get this shot without a parent present so if that's a concern they must be present and signed for that child. I, I know that. That's that's not the point. Okay. You do understand what my point I, is. I do understand yeah. your point. It's it's a family's decision to vaccinate or not vaccinate, and they need to speak with their doctor about that decision. Right. And I would have a question about you know will encourage it. QAC public schools will encourage because yeah, how would you encourage it? Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm, that's I'm, what I asked. Well, right. I think so if, if somebody asked about it, I think we could just point them in the direction of the health department or their physician, and then oops, I'm on the phone lines also, every single day answering those questions. I also right. think that encouragement comes when um, you have um, vaccination clinics or opportunities within your community for, um, and we did that with our teachers. We encouraged our teachers and our staff members to get vaccinated, and we provided an opportunity for them to get vaccinated that was convenient and worked through the school district as well with the health department to create those clinics, I guess we call them, I'm not quite sure um, exactly the terminology, yeah. but doing the same thing for students to give them an opportunity to be able to have an, a location and give them the direction if they wanted to go get vaccinated, that they could get vaccinated. And right, that's right? for the county health department. Yeah, so would you be amenable Partner to with a, them. A, a blurb on the website or whatever if you were interested in and put the resources for them to seek rather than us encourage? You can do that on the website, but the, my point is, when you say encouraged, this is an affirmative. You're saying we are, we will encourage. If we that provide is, opportunities. That is, is that what I you're want suggesting? you. I want you to go out and encourage our students and our teachers, I guess, probably staff as well, to get vaccinated. As that pertains to students, I don't think that's appropriate. I would just strike that's it. I don't point. know why we'd have to say anything. I'm sorry. We can strike it. Yeah. I just don't want it because this is being treated as you know universal face coverings are going in. We've treated that as a, a mandate. We've made a motion to unmandate that, uh, which was defeated as we know. So you keep following down here. We will encourage those who are eligible to get vaccinated. That's an open, those who are eligible is an open group, which would include students. I don't want to see students being encouraged to get vaccinated when their parents have already said, we're not going to get vaccinated. Then, you know, the student comes home and says, gee, mom, you know, we're not supporting the community. We're not doing this. It's all, we got to get vaccinated. <clears throat> Why? Well, because our teachers said so, or because the school said so, because that's the thing to do, the right thing to do, morally, you know, the whole laundry list. You see where I'm going with this? I know you, I don't know, maybe if you're saying we are going to encourage this, a principal or a teacher may make posters with lights and whistles. I don't know. You know, and I've had people come into the Boy Scout troop. Hey, I'm a healthcare professional in the county. I'd like to talk to your Boy Scouts about, uh, you know, the healthcare profession and all that, that stuff. And I said, well, let me see what you got, you know, in PowerPoint. And of course, it's these are viruses, these are the vax. Everybody needs to get vaccinated. Yay, you know, we're all vaccinated. So it was like, sorry, this is for the parents, not for for you to talk to the Boy Scouts. So just as an example, I mean, these are people want everybody to get vaccinated, and I can see that this could uh, become an issue. So I'm trying to prevent that. I don't think it's appropriate, as I've you know stated as nauseam, and uh, and I'll leave it at that. So whatever it takes. Well, I, I, we we That's got a motion and a, and a second. Um, <laughs> then basically. And I will still say the same thing. I think it's up. It's personal choice. I recommend people get vaccinated. I think you need to talk to a medical professional. And like Michelle said, anybody under 18 has to have parent consent. I understand Mark's thing that, you know, sometimes leaders, you know, you, you take too much in this and somebody else can go a little too far. 
I have no problem with it, but I can understand both sides of it. But any other discussion? Yeah, I, I have a problem with us making a motion. Why couldn't we just ask nicely? Why do we have to? Oh, it's beyond that. There is a motion. And no, 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 it's not beyond that. Why didn't we just ask nicely? Well, well, nicely. Ask nicely. nicely. I mean, I have no well, problem. I made a motion nicely. I'm just asking nicely. Why couldn't That's, we have just asked? Uh, yeah. me, uh, Mr. President, I made the motion. Okay. Dr. Salins, was I nice to you? No. Do okay. we have a good working relationship? Very respectful. I yes. think you're excellent. Yeah. And, uh, okay. But I made a motion. And I don't I, think I was unkind, Ms. Yeah. Harper. And I and I think Mark, if he wants to make a motion, and he's sure. then we find out if it's five zero four one three two or whatever number it is. Okay. Is there any more discussion? We call, better call this one too. <laughs> Mrs. Harper. You start pass. Down. Just pass right now. Staying? No, I don't stay in. I just, I, I have a hard time with this. Mrs. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? No. Mr. Schipanelli? Yes. Mrs. Bennett? Yes. Mrs. Harper? Yes. Motion passes four to one. Thank you. Okay. Any other on that item for discussion? Okay, moving on. Current board items. Mid-Shore Community Foundation donation. Yes, so um, President Smith, members of the board, um, I know that um, Jane has brought this forward to us, but I'd like to speak on it. I have written a personal note of thank you. Um, as we all know that um, mental health in our schools needs to be addressed and we try to put as much funding towards that as possible. Um, we have several different funding sources that we've been using to address that, um, but we also have really good partnerships here and the Midshore Community Foundation actually donated $2,000 um, to the school district um, that is basically for um, addressing mental health. And so we wanted to thank them publicly. Um, Jane, I'm not sure if you want to add anything, additional comments, but we really just wanted to thank them publicly and wanted to make um, this board aware of the partnership and the support that we have in the community. I appreciate that. Yes, I I'll add my thanks as well. That's yeah, fine. mental health that's is, a, nice. I mean, <laughs> a lot of things work around that and that's a, that's a problem that I think is a very underlying problem in our county, country and everywhere. So appreciate that donation. So I'll make the motion to accept the donation from the Midshore Community Foundation in the amount of $2,000 to the Queens County Board of Education. Right. Second. So moved. A motion second, any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank them. Yeah, thank yes, them. I yeah. did. As I said, I wrote a personal note right away, even though it takes some time sometimes to get on the agenda, obviously, right? Our next one is 402, contract for personal protection equipment. Yes, Mr. Pender is going to come up and, and share um, this contract because it's a larger amount of money, obviously. Good evening, President Smith, Superintendent Salins, board members, um, Sid Pender, Chief Operating Officer. Um, Tonight, I'm here in front of you to um, seek approval for two different contracts. Um, one, the first one that we're discussing is um, piggybacking on Southern Maryland's um, cooperative purchase agreement uh, for PPE, mask, sanitizer, wipes. Um, it's through Daycon Corp. It's, through, it's for $500,000. Um, and that will come from ESSER two funds that we have available. Do you want me to explain a little bit about what we're searching for or um, feel free? No, I thank you. You, you were <laughs> Sorry, really nice about answering me my questions at nine o'clock last night. Um, so no, thank you. <laughs> it's clean enough from death. I'm sorry. <laughs> But um, did so. But I did ask for the, the prices of the PPE. Was that coming, or is that already there? And I it's it's seen in it. there in that document. Thank so you. it has no, the list. It. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. You're you welcome. For your time. You're welcome. Just for a little historical reference, DACON is who we purchased all the PPE from last year with the ESSER two fund, ESSER one funds. They were listed on several, several times on mm. the previous document. So, 
so when you look at it, like I said, there's two different documents. One, the second one you're going to see is strictly for like a regular toilet paper that I need for school to start. You know, that's two weeks. That's that comes out of the operating budget. So the first one, yes, is S or two. But let, let's stay on the first one first, okay. and then we can because you're going to need approval on this. Five hundred thousand. Is that what we spent roughly last year? had a little bit of a greater expense yeah. because there was some preliminary disinfecting equipment. The equipment was the bigger. So this, like our machines that go around and mist and all that right. and everything. So, so what you're looking for now is just a refill rate, the burn, we're burn looking rate. at the burn rate. Some items we have now, we have for one go around, all right? Some items we have that are gonna last us for two months. I mean, I think the, the object, and, and the, the logical part of it is, is when you order it, you know, we don't need to order everything at once because things are going to change. You know, we order for what we need at the time, but we also want to be, you know, remember that, all right, supply and demand. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now there's a decent supply of things, so can we put that in there? You know, we're not going to spend the $500,000, like, all at one shot. It's going to be throughout the entire school year on that. That's a good just But the key is to keep enough, you know, for one month of, you know, supply in case, you know, something does change. I don't want to buy, you know, say $200,000 worth of wipes if something were to change tomorrow. I mean, it's going to take me five years to burn that off, you know. So it's looking at the burn rates of what we're using. Some items, like I said, last a month. Some items we need to repurchase before. Um, the next month because, like I said, the burn rate's just a little bit higher on them. So what you're doing is just holding those funds in its own pocket and then using them as necessary. Yes, ma'am. That is correct. And is this a shelf reorder item or do you or somebody in our staff reorder? This is, they, this don't, they, they don't come in and just say we need no, to start this. No, we, we order that and it's they're brought to the warehouse. And then just so you know, for all of our PPE, each school has a point of contact who's responsible for signing off on that equipment. So we deliver, you know, say 200 face shields to a school. Somebody's signing off on that. Somebody's documenting that that's being distributed. We just don't sit there and go, hey, here is the whole entire box. Which track? And there, we do have a mechanism in place, yes. And I think we have somebody in each school that's head of that when they need some. I mean, last year I remember some, a teacher saying we don't have this, but there's actually somebody in each school. There's a point of contact. Point of contact in each school to make sure that they have ample supplies. And that's always been in place from the beginning of this. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? All right. I, I, mm. I need a motion. Mr. Smith, I make a motion to approve the uh, piggybacking on the Southern Maryland Cooperative Purchase Agreement with Daycon Products for the amount of $500,000, budget source ESSERT II funds. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Okay, now we're to. Oh, can I ask a question? Is is it just a typo on the sheet of paper on the sheet that says it's two hundred sixty-five? I knew it was five hundred thousand, and that's what it is. No, 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 no. There's, that's the second one. That's PPE, though, right? It's been revised. Okay. It's, okay. It's, what's on board docs is correct. Okay, just the our hard copy is incorrect. When did you print that? I didn't. Somebody printed this for me. I didn't print this one. Oh, you're talking about on the sheet. Yeah, it still says okay. 265. Okay. The document that you'll find today. Okay, just for 3500, yes, ma'am. Sorry. That's all right. That's a good question. That's, that's fine. Okay, so now we're into the custodial supply, green cleaning, etc. So yes, this is our standard VMI, again, looking to piggyback on the Southern Maryland contract. Uh, for probably seven or eight years, we've piggybacked on the Fairfax County contract. That is up for renewal in October. I, I feel much better going with a contract that's already in place uh, with the prices. So when we're talking VMI, vendor management inventory, we're talking about our regular consumables of toilet paper, paper towels, the everyday items that we need to you know function within the school system. And just, and that's for 265,000 dollars out of the um, uh, FY22 operating budget. Um, to put that in kind of perspective, for all of our students and employees, that comes out to about $34 or so per student. So, I mean, it's a, a reasonable price if you're thinking for that many students to for come whole in and out for a whole year, yes. And this is 265000 each year? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yep. And, and we have that in the budget, Ms. Towers? Yes. That's what was budgeted in for this amount? Correct. 
Okay, do you have any other questions? Do I have a motion? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the bid for the piggyback on the Southern Maryland Cooperative Purchasing Agreement for the green cleaning supplies, the amount of $265,000, budget, budget source, the unrestricted budget, FY 2022. Second. Motion second, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're moving on to future meetings and events. Um, we, but next Monday, Dr. Samlins, we're having the schools have an opening. We, we are for the staff. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll start um, and, uh, at Queen Anne's um, High School eight o'clock in the morning um, with the entire feeder system on that end um, and do a nice kickoff where we have some of our community partnerships that will come and welcome our staff back. Um, some obviously aren't being welcomed back because they've been working all summer, but we hope some of them got a nice break at least. And then we'll move from there and go to Ken Island High School and um, do the same. And um, I think it's gonna be a great kickoff day. Um, of course, we'll be outside socially distanced um, to make sure that we can yeah, to, to follow that, but um, yeah, so hope that it is a nice day <laughs> so that we don't have to be forced to change plans or whatever, but I'm excited to have an opportunity to be in front of the staff as I obviously haven't had a chance to meet many of them. Are we also recognizing the teacher of the year at that time? Oh, there was, a, there was um, an email. Or is that, was that not yeah. supposed to be talked about? Yeah. Oh, that was, uh, okay. didn't say a word. <laughs> You think it's I okay. talk too much? Strike that. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and I think I, you ever heard that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So all the board members know that's happening. So hopefully we can attend. Sorry. You know, a couple board members down. So can I? I'm in somewhere each. Our next regular school board meeting will be September the first. That's public comment. We do have September the 15th on our work session. And then our next meeting in October, which will be after that, is October the 6th and everything. Um, I would request uh, that we have discussion on our metrics and our uh, face coverings updates at each of these meetings. Yes, so we can uh, be updated on that. And that will be a thing that we will do until we get through this pandemic or whatever. Absolutely. I think, I think we agree to that. Does the board have any other? Questions or comments? Actually, I would I would like emails daily until the first day of school and beyond to, if anything changes. Should we need to meet in an emergency yeah. session or something of that nature? Absolutely. Yeah, I th it, yeah if, and I think uh, it, 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 we can meet any time with notice. If we have to make a decision. Of course, it's Dr. Salen's purview to make the decisions on a daily basis. Um, and hopefully, we can, we're going to be going this way. Um, and that's what we're all looking for. Um, sure hope so. You know, we'll see what happens. I hear no further discussion. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Thank you for watching our meeting.